If you like this video, please go ahead and consider hitting that like button. Subscribe if you have not already. And please, by all means, share this video. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Chap Ado Farm. But before that, this video is brought to you by Paul Nadon Jr. and Squiggy486. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Chop Ado Farm map can be found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to Razinda Chop Ado, a vast map inspired by the lush landscapes of the state of Mateo Rosso, Brazil. And really sorry if I butchered any of that stuff. This setting has been carefully designed to offer Farming Simulator 22 players an authentic and immersive experience in the heart of Brazilian agribusiness. This map includes two grain cell points, sell your factory products at the supermarket, a case I store, two irrigation pivots, three farms to choose from. There are custom crops on this map, one of which is peanuts. More on that in a little bit. This map includes various landscape plants, a limestone factory, wood cell point, cell point for bales, and a small town. This map also includes three required mods in the Mega Silo package, the Jackco K3500, and the Frock Inc. Irrigation Pivot. And with that, let's go ahead and load on into the map. So in addition to those required mods, we are also going to be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. Now, before we load in, I do want to talk about premium expansion. If you do not own premium expansion, then you will not be able to plant peanuts. The peanut planter is a modded premium expansion planter. So if you do not activate premium expansion or you do not own it, you will not be able to plant the peanuts that are included on this map. Now, if you load this map up in farm, manager mode, or start from scratch, you'll find that all the farms are built out exactly how you see them here in new farm mode. In addition, you do have starting machinery in all of those game modes. So therefore, the only differences are you do not own any land or your bank balances are gonna be different in those alternate game modes. In addition, I loaded this map up with my low end test system, which is using integrated AMD graphics. And I found a solid 60 frames per second wherever I was on this map. So if you are running with a lower end system, you should have no issues whatsoever, maintaining very high and steady frame rates. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. And one of the predominant things you're going to find on this map are that we have large fields. Most of these fields are rectangular or square, and we have two irrigation pivots located right here, just to the east of our main starting farm. If you take a look at our lands overview. Our starting farm is at farmland ID1, which can be bought in any alternate game mode for $1.3 million. In addition, there is a farm at farmland ID6 that is $1.4 million and one at Farmland ID 12, which is $1.78 million. So very, very expensive farmlands. This map does include all the standard crops available to us in FS22. In addition, we have black beans, peanuts, and coffee beans as added crops to this map. And if you do have the premium expansion, well, then you also have parsnips, carrots, and red beets. Take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands that are available on this map, how large they are, if they include any field, what fields are included, and then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? What we can see here is all the farmlands that include fields are fairly expensive, with the cheapest being farmland ID3 for field one, which is $724,848. The most expensive is Farmland ID8, which is Field 8, for $3.4 million, nearly $3.5 million if you round up. If we take a look at our field calculator screen, this is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. And as you can see, our fields are going to range in size from 7.26 hectares 
all the way up to our largest field, which is 56.65 hectares, with several fields ranging in the 20s hectare range. With respect to our precision farming soil map, this map is making use of the generic soil map that is a part of the precision farming mod. So let's go ahead and see how that is being applied to these fields. Since so much of this map is agriculture, farmland, we can see a vast majority of the soil map, and we can see how the soils here are going to look with respect to a big hunk. Right in the middle is going to be sandy loam, loamy sand, and loam. We have swaths of silty clay to the north, moving over to the west, and then coming across to south. And then the entire eastern edge is basically going to be silty clay. We do also have a custom crop counter on this map where we start in February. So we do have a South American crop calendar. And as such, we do have custom growth schedules for all of our crops, as well as black beans, peanuts, and coffee beans. With respect to our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops that are available to us here in FS22, as well as all of our animal outputs of eggs, wool, and milk, and our silage, hay, straw, and grass. As we continue down through all of the base game production items, we once again do indeed have the ability to sell all of those over at the supermarket. We also do have the ability to buy bulk lime at the lime station, as well as sell our stones once again at the lime station. With respect to our custom crops, do note there are no sell points for coffee beans pre-placed on this map. We do have a couple sell points for black bean. And then with respect to peanuts, we do have multiple sell points for our peanuts. We did see sell points for our red beets, carrots, and parsnips as well. We have roasted coffee as added products. With our farm production pack, we do not have the ability to sell any of the washed root crops. With respect to our Platinum expansion, we do indeed have the ability to sell all the Platinum expansion productions at the supermarket. And that continues with the Premium expansion productions at various sell points. If you do play with pumps and hoses, we do have the ability of getting rid of our separated manure. And if you are playing with straw harvest, we also have the ability of getting rid of our hay and straw pellets. With respect to our starting fleet, we own all of our starting machinery. We do not have too much in the way of starting machinery and most of it is not that well maintained so you're not going to get prime money with respect to still selling your starting fleet we do not have any animals pre-placed on this map we do have contracts available and we do not own any production chains at the start lastly this map does list itself as having 21 collectibles Let's go ahead and take a look at that starting fleet. We start with the John Deere 8R 280 large tractor. We have the New Holland CR 10.90 harvester. We have the Bruin 4200 self-propelled fertilizer and herbicide sprayer. We have the Mahindra retriever. We also have the Kloss Karat 140 TD trailer. For our harvester, we have the 41 foot grain header. And you will see that that grain header is also going to harvest our black beans. We have the Optima RS planter, and then we have two pivots that we own at the start, and they're going to either accept herbicide or liquid fertilizer. With respect to mods and DLCs, well, we have the pivots that are part of the required mods, and you can buy these, transport them to your field, and set them up we're not going to talk a whole lot about this because, well, this is a map tour as opposed to a mod review. With respect to the map itself, we also have the Ventor 4150 that has been modified to be able to harvest peanuts. But do note, there's nothing here modded with respect to planting or seeding those peanuts. So if we come up here to our tools, well, if we go to our seeders, You'll see that we do not have peanuts listed here for anything that is got a classification of cedars. Well, let's move over to our planters. Our planters, once again, do not have anything listed showing that they are going to be able to plant our peanuts. Well, how are we going to put peanuts in the ground? 
Well, I thought, well, let's look under potato technology. Nope. They're only going to be able to do potatoes. How about beets? Well, beets are planted with a normal planter. How about sugarcane? Nope. They just do sugarcane. Well, that only leaves one thing. Vegetable technology. And here we go. Between our two premium expansion vegetable planters for our red beets, carrots, and parsnips. Well, here we have peanuts. So you will need to use one of these premium expansion cedars in order to put peanuts into the ground. With that said, let's just talk a little bit about our starting farm here. We have our farmhouse, and this farmhouse has a sleep trigger and a wardrobe trigger. We also have a water trigger, and then we have a machine shed. And inside the machine shed, we have our harvester, we have our tractor, we have our trailer. Outside the machine shed, we have our planter, our sprayer, and our harvester header. And that is the starting farm. And everything on the starting farm can indeed be sold. Let's go check out our build mode with respect to sheds. Do have a few sheds that are tied to the map, which we can put down. Silos. We have the mega silo pack, which is a required mod. And we have our water tank under containers. And then we have a custom farmhouse with respect to production. Let's take a look here. I see our coffee factory. This coffee factory is not pre-placed at the start. If you do want to do coffee or coffee beans, you will need to put down this coffee factory. In fact, the only production at the start is going to be the lime plant, which is going to take lime or sorry, stones and convert that to lime. Our selling points. Do not have any custom sell points. We do have the ability to plant our coffee trees if it was in the proper time frame of the year. Do not have any custom animal areas. And with respect to our ground textures, well, we do have a few custom ground textures, so they may be worth taking a look at. And as far as plants go, we do have some custom plants also added here so you can really decorate up your farms or your areas. And then trees. Well, we do have custom trees on this map. We do not have the ability to place these custom trees, which is a little, a little disappointing. Let's get a little bit of altitude and now we can kind of get a sense of how big these fields really are around on this map. So here we have field 11. This is our field that we own at the start. 52.24 acres in size. To the west, we have the two pivots that we own. Now, we do not own these fields at the start, so you would have to buy these fields. We do have these pivots. They are pre-placed, and you're going to be able to enter these and then control them. And you'll have to bring fertilizer or herbicide to these to fill them up in order to start their operation. To the northeast. We have one of the two grain cell points. And this is also where we're going to find our wood cell point. So we're going to come here through the scales and directly to our left, we have our wood cell point. So we have a wood dump and wood cell trigger. And then we're going to move and then here we have our grain cell point here at Pioneer Grain. We move to the south, we're going to come across the small town. And here at the small town, to the right, we're going to come up to our gas station. 
immediately to the left of our gas station, we're going to find our grocery or supermarket sell point. So we have our fuel station, our supermarket sell point right there. We have our Case IH dealership. And our Case IH dealership is closed up until 9 a.m. And at 9 a.m., these front doors do open, as well as the rear doors. Now, if we have our F1 menu up, and we come up here to the door, you can see in the F1 menu, it says store closed. Well, the store isn't closed. It was up until 9, but now we can come in here and we can, well, do our business. So let's go ahead and just pick up our Mahindra just to see where vehicles are going to spawn when we buy them here at the shop. Now, as far as our service bay, well, we can just take this hallway back right here to the service dealership area. And we're going to have our activation trigger right there for our dealer trigger. And the trigger itself, well, it's basically right here along these cones right at the door up in this general area so it's this rectangle here i would like to have seen markers indicating where the trigger started and stopped now if we come to this door area you'll see once again it says store closed but the store is not closed i'm not really sure why it doesn't cycle from store closed to store open but at any rate, maybe that is a custom script that for one one reason or the other is missing from this map. Got a really nice parts department here. A really nice detailed dealership. We have a very large area for our vehicles to spawn back here in the back, which is good because, well, we're gonna wanna buy large machinery for these fairly large fields. We have our bale sell point right next to our dealership. And let's continue south along the eastern edge of the map. Field three, well, it's gonna be 48 acres in size. And this is gonna be our animal dealership down here to the southeast corner. Do have some animated cows down here, so it's nice to see a little bit of life here at the dealership. We have our trigger. So if we had any animal pins, we could just buy them directly from here. Make our way close to the center of the map. This is going to be our second starting farm or second, second farm option. I guess I really should have taken a look at all three of these farms back during the farm tour portion, but mm, you gotta forgive me for kind of skipping out on my format a little bit, I guess. So once you buy this land, you'll be able to make use of the water trigger, which is located here. There is a sleep trigger inside, and then we have a wardrobe trigger outside here at this farmhouse. We also have a workshop trigger located right here. And this is our farm silo. So we have our dump point and we have our fill point. Now with respect to this farm it being customizable, silo, permanent. The workshop trigger and this large shed, permanent. The fuel trigger, permanent. The farmhouse and the water trigger can be sold. So a vast majority of this central farm is going to be permanent as far as being on the map and not customizable. You'll also see that we do have utility poles running through the fields. These utility poles do have collisions. So if you are using hired help or course play, you will need to program them to avoid those utility poles or you will just have to work around those and fix them afterwards. Here we have our second grain cell point. We're coming here through the scales. 
And we have our dump point located right there. And then behind us, we have our lime production. So this is the only production on the map. For $250,000, we can buy our lime production. We're going to deliver stones here, and we're going to output lime over here. Now there are two outputs. One is to buy lime, and one is to take lime out of the production. So I believe this is gonna be the output of the production. And I believe this is gonna be the lime buy point. It would be nice to see some signage here indicating which is the buy point and which is the output of your production. That way you don't accidentally buy lime that you've just produced because well, that would be highly undesirable. And then our final point of interest on this particular map for is going to be the third possible player farm up here right by field 10. Now everything at this farm can be sold. So we can sell the shed, we can sell the farmhouse, and we can sell the water tanker. So everything here at this farm and everything at the starting farm can be sold with respect to our scoring metrics what does this all mean we're going to be on the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such we do have one production built in we also have the ability to place coffee bean production so we get a full point there with respect to the ability to sell all of our basic crops animal outputs and productions here once again we're going to be giving the map a full point there as well because we do indeed have the ability to sell all of the base game productions, all the base game crops, as well as all the animal outputs. With respect to the farm being customizable, we are going to take a quarter point off because of the things that we cannot sell here at this central farm. Again, they're going to be the large farm silo, this large shed, and the fuel trigger. With respect to buildings where appropriately are using the new texturing technique, I do believe that they are, and if they aren't, well, they are not overly distracting from the overall enjoyment of the map, in my opinion. So we're going to give the map a full point there. Then lastly, trigger and interactive areas being clearly marked. Well, as I mentioned here at the shop, we are going to deduct a quarter of a point because I would like to have seen the corner markers clearly indicating where this trigger was. would also have liked to have seen indicators over here at the lime production with respect to what is an buy out point and what is your production out point and i did not feel that, that was super clearly marked and therefore we're taking a quarter point off there that's going to wrap this map up with a score of four and a half out of five i would also like to have seen with respect to this map but i'm not going to deduct any points is the ability to plant or seed peanuts with some sort of base game machinery or with a mod that was included with the map. I think that this map is fairly nice and something that is going to be attractive to a core set of FS22 players. Will that core set of players also own the premium expansion? That I don't know. The fact that the premium expansion is required to be able to plant your peanuts might be a bit of a turnoff, if you will, to players that may be initially interested in this map. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below with respect to this map requiring the premium expansion in order to plant or seed peanuts. And then what do you think of this map overall with respect to its inclusion of not only peanuts, but beans and coffee, as well as the overall layout. And until next time, happy farming.